we're going to talk about the vowel O. Uh, when we learn to read, we call this the long O sound. There are two versions in English, the diphthong O and the monophthong O. The diphthong starts in the position of O and glides to O, like book. O, 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 O. We tend to use this when the syllable is stressed, like uh, rotate, protein, or when the syllable is um, open. It's not followed by a vowel. So um, follow would be an example. The monophthong, o, tends to be used when the syllable is unstressed, like rotation, rotation, uh, or when the syllable is closed, alone. So the um, consonant n follows the o. These are just tips to help you recognize which one is more likely. Um, certainly it's possible for them to occur in, in each other's um, positions. Um, for example, in parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin, you may only find the monophthong version. So something like, um, oh no, I've got to go home, might be pronounced there like, oh no, I've got to go home. Um, and there are some other versions just to be aware of. Um, uh, there are different versions of the diphthong. Uh, you could use a schwa as the on glide, so it would be sort of like a, o, a, o, 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 no, I have to go. You can also use a as the um, on glide. That would be like, um, oh no, I have to go. Uh, that's uh, fairly common. My sister likes to use that one. Um, so these are some options. Uh, your ability to discern between them will um, get better as you go along. Um, it's not the biggest priority um, discerning between O and O, um, but I do want you to practice it. Um, and um, recognize when one would be um, maybe unusual or highly dialectal.